Welcome to Todd's Two Minute Tech Tip Tuesday, brought to you by Big Beard Battery. Visit BigBeardBattery.com. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button, that way you don't miss anything. Hit the subscribe button now. Thank you. So this week on What Is It? Let's talk about the Suburban Water Heater. Now, I know that we've already done a video at least talking about how to replace your anode rod on the Suburban Water Heater. Let's dig a little bit deeper into the Suburban Water Heater to find out <laughs> what is that. All right, we're gonna look at the black cases. I've got two black cases. I've got a square black case, and below I've got kind of an oblong black case. Huh? Now, if I take black case, if I take that black case off, I actually reveal this is where our heating element is. This is our electric heating element. This is what a new one looks like right here, okay? This is one that has been calcified. This is what it looks like, well used. All right, now, granted, different sizes, but this is actually what's inside here. The reason for the black case that we have there, there's 120 volts going there. So guys, handle this with care whenever you take this off. Make sure you turn off the 120 volts to your water heater. Now, if you notice with the Suburban water heater, you do have a handy dandy little on off switch. So make sure that that is in the off position before you take this case off. And this is where you actually locate your water heater heating element. Next, we'll actually look at our next black case and what we have over here, this little square here. Well, this is where our thermostat disks are. So let's think about this. If I have heat going to the water that's inside, I need to turn that heat off for, you know, whenever we get to a certain temperature. Well, behind here, I've got some thermostat disks. Here we go. There we go. Childproof. You'll see I have some thermostat disks, all right? I have a high temperature limit switch, and then right above that, <laughs> I've got what's called an ECO, or an emergency cutoff switch. Guys, they're both disks that are just simply checking the, therm or checking the temperature of my tank. Inside, or underneath this styrofoam here, is just the simple steel tank. And those disks simply sit on those, uh, on those tanks. And they're just checking the temperature. Once it reaches roughly about 140 degrees, we send the signal back over to the circuit board and it simply says we are hot enough to turn the heating element off, whether it be the heating element or using our propane, okay? We have a safety on the Suburban. We have what is called a high temperature limit switch. That's the first one. The second one with this little disc right here, that's just an emergency cutoff. So once it reaches roughly around 190, real close to two, uh, 200 degrees, that one will pop. Now, if that one pops, you're not resetting it, okay? We need to find out what's going on. But that's what's behind here. This is what actually regulates the temperature. No, you can't change the temperature. It's set at 140 degrees by those discs. So that's what's behind here. Now over here we have our burning, um, I'm sorry, yeah, our burner assembly. So we have our propane coming in. All water heaters in the RV space are propane. Some water heaters are both propane and electric. So over here, of course, we have our burner assembly with our solenoid gas valve. Simply either opens or closes, allows the propane to go through. So if we want to run on propane, sends that signal over to our solenoid. Solenoid opens up and says, let the propane go on through. You'll see what it looks like, you know, if you actually did in your car or something like that, this looks like on your, actually, I take that back, actually on your lawnmower. This looks like a spark plug boot, and that's pretty much what it is. This is our igniter, and what it does is it's gonna take that 12 volt signal and ramp it up to 20,000 volts. Sends that through there and it creates a little arc, and that arc is sitting right in front of that propane gas coming through there. I got the air gas mixture coming through here, goes across that arc, kaboom, there's our flame. So that's what we have inside here. Last thing we want to look at real quick, this valve right here. Looks like a little faucet. This is what we call a PNT valve. That's just our pressure and temperature valve. And I'll leave it up to you to figure out, let you figure out what it's actually regulating. All right. So if we get up to a certain amount of uh, temperature, which is roughly around 200 degrees, 210 degrees, 200 degrees, somewhere around there, this will open up. All right, I've got some pressure, um, a spring in there as well. So if I get to about 150 PSI, this will begin to leak. If yours is leaking, there's a couple things we wanna look at, okay? It could be that this is getting old, but before you replace it, what we wanna do is restore the air gap in here, okay? Because we're heating up water, we're creating some gases, and so we need to leave room for that expansion. 
All right, so what we need to do, in the, in the event that yours is leaking, here's your tech tip. Turn off the power. Turn off the power to your water heater. Don't let it heat up anymore. Now, if you need to speed things up, you can go over to your hot water faucet, open up your hot water faucet. What will happen is, is hot water will come out, cold water begins to come back in. Once that temperature reaches cold, you know, inside your faucet or whatnot, cut off the hot water. All right, now you're gonna go outside and either turn off your pump, if you're running on your own water, or if you're on the city, go over to the spigot, turn it off. Basically, we're cutting the water supply to our water tank. Now you're gonna come over to the side over here where this PNT valve is. Now, I'll direct you on where you stand. Don't stand in front of it. Because there's 150 PSI, and when we open that valve, we're gonna get water all over the place. So just simply stand to the side, and all you have to do is just tap on that. You're gonna have a burst of water come out, and then you're gonna hear air get sucked back in. Get sucked back in, what happens is you restored your air gap. Close that off, and let's see if it stops leaking. If it stops leaking, well, you don't have to replace it, okay? If it still continues to leak, then it could have, you could have worn out the seal in there, and so now it's time to replace. All right, so let's say you're coming over and you're looking at your boot here, and not your boot that you wear, but of course the boot that goes over the igniter, and you see that it's all charred, okay? If it is charred, then more than likely, you've been driving down the road with your water heater on. Right, so I know that it's not illegal, but I'm one of the only people out there that will tell you, you were foolish by driving down the road with your propane on. If your propane on, that if your propane is on while you're going down the road, then that means you've got a flame somewhere. Now let's think about this. I've got your, you got your RV running 70 miles an hour down the road. You're going to have air flying by the outside on here, and it's going to pull the air inside our tank out which means that flame comes out. And if that flame comes out, it'll char that boot. Please, oh please, I know it's convenient, but please do not drive down the road with your propane on, much less have your water heater on. It takes roughly 15 minutes to heat up your water, 15 to 20 minutes. You do not need to have your water heater on while you're going down the road. Right? Actually, I even talk about the anode rod and when to replace those by looking at this. <laughs> Oops. Hello, so this is what I'm talking about. <laughs> but let's dig a little bit deeper. Yep, here, there. It'd be your left hand. How about if I did this? Well, it's that way. 